Hey everyone, Todd and Bull Legend 826 here. I'm going to be review making another film review, and this film is called I'm Not Ashamed, you know, and it stars Macy McLean Stanley and Ben Davies. Now, the film is based on a true story, you know, talking about the first victim of the Columbine High School Massacre. Her name was Rachel Joy Scott. Okay, now that seems like a good thing, you know, making a film about a victim who was murdered, who had her life cut short, it makes sense, you know, because you want to glorify the victims, you know, not the killers, that's what they always say. Name the victims, not the people responsible for the killings in the first place. So yeah, Rachel Scott. Now, the film was, in my opinion, okay. I'm not saying it was great, because I think some film events of the film might have been exaggerated, or might have been, like, a little bit far from the truth, to put it lightly. Like, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, I'm just saying my honest opinion here. I think we can all express our honest opinions. Now, keep in mind that I'm not ashamed as a film made by Pure Flix. You know, they make Christian films. Now, I'm not going to argue with you people about whether I'm a Christian, or whether I'm a Muslim, or whether I'm a, I'm a preterist, because first of all, that is none of your business. That's my personal problem. You deal with your shit, I deal with mine. Probably shouldn't use the, you know, probably shouldn't curse on here, but that's, that's, not, that's not the point. Okay, the point is I'm just reviewing this film and giving my opinion about it. Now, I don't want to give away too many, too, too, I don't want to give away any spoiler alerts, but, I mean, if you haven't seen the film, then why are you watching our, my, our review about it, you know what I mean? But anyways, the film shows Rachel's, you know, senior year at Columbine High School during the 1998 to 1999 school year, you know, before it all went down. You know, and Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris, you know, the two people that were responsible for the Columbine Massacre, their lives are also shown briefly as well, you know? You see bits and pieces of them, you know, in the film. You know, it starts with Rachel growing up, you know, her father left the family, you know, and then and then they were all praying to God, you know, hoping that he would help them and everything. And Rachel, you know, you see her, like, throughout her senior year, we see her, like, drawing, you know, making pictures, you know. We see her, like, talking about her faith in class, you know, talking about, like... How she wanted to make, start a chain reaction, how to make a, she wanted to make a difference on the world. And I can respect that, you know. I think everyone, all of us want to make some kind of an impact, you know. We should all be different, you know, in our own ways. But that being said, the, not everything in the film seems to be 100% true. I don't think it is because, as we all know, you know, Hollywood loves to exaggerate details. And there was no way that everything in that film was 100% true exactly the way it is, you know. And also, Klebold and Harris are briefly shown in the film, you know. Now, keep in mind that people had these myths about Klebold and Harris speaking about the Columbine shooting. People thought that they were the bullied outcasts, they were the victims, they were the poor, privileged children that were such innocent angels and they were bullied relentlessly by the mean, cruel jocks, and because of that they, all lo they both lost their tempers and they all hell broke loose. Now, we know that that is not true at all. Klebold and Harris were not the bullied victims. They were not the bullied outcasts. They were not, you know, two privileged t kids that were that were bullied relentlessly. That is not true. They were not the biggest outcasts in the school by a long shot, you know. Klebold and Harris were actually fairly popular. Well, at least Harris was slightly popular anyways. And Harris was on the school's bowling team, you know, and Klebold was on the fantasy baseball team. So they were kind of jocks, you know. They were not in the jocks groups wearing the white hats, granted, but they were jocks, so they were not like the, the two nerds that were on, that were the biggest outcasts and they were weaklings, no, they were not, all right, so get, let's just get that annoying, lying theory out of the way, because that is completely garbage, and we already know it's not true, I already know it's not true anyways, but anyway, the point remains the same, now anyways, I have to express my point, let me, express my my opinion about the film. You know, I thought the film was pretty good. I thought it was well done. Not I don't I'm not saying I agree with everything in the film, but everybody can have their opinions, right? Oh, who am I kidding? People who who think I'm I'm staying hateful stuff will just like put hate on my channel anyway, but that's that's besides the point. So anyways, we see Rachel in her senior year. We see her, you know, hanging out with this boy, you know. We see her at the we see her during a play. We see her helping this guy, Nathan Belliard or whatever his name was portrayed by Ben Davies, and it's based on a real-life person, too, that Rachel actually helped, you know, Rachel actually helped this person that was homeless, you know, and I think, you know, invited him to church or something like that, you know, which may be true, which could be a little bit exaggerated in the film, but, you know, that's just my personal opinion. We also see Harrison Klebold planning the big attack on April 20th, you know, them training in the backyards of their homes, we see Eric reading his book about natural selection, like, in his basement, 
We see them shooting, like, playing video games in the basement. Then we see the, you know, we see them, like, having a lot of rage. We see them confront Rachel. Now, I don't think this is true. I think that is one thing that the film is exaggerated, that Rachel and Eric and Dylan interacted all that much. They interacted like, probably only, like, one time, I think, when Dylan was helping Rachel a little bit with the play, not even knowing that, that on April 20th that she would be killed by Eric. You know, I mean, I think that, that the film exaggerated how Eric and Dylan met Rachel slightly a bit. I think it's kind of exaggerated here because Eric and Dylan confronted Rachel about her, about them stopping their video in class because Eric and Dylan made a video about bullies getting shot on camera, like, to a bunch of people. But like I said before, Eric and Dylan were not the bullied outcasts. Even if they were the most popular kids, even if they were the, the most wealthiest jocks, even if they were the liked by everyone in the school, they would have done the attack all the same. They would have done it anyways. So anyway, yeah, so I think that part is slightly exaggerated. But still, you know, I like the fact they try to honor Rachel Scott, and you notice that Rachel's brother, Craig Scott, makes a cameo in the film, you know, briefly for a f few seconds. I, I saw him as a mini Mark clerk, I think. Yeah. And also, um... So I should probably explain to you what happened, like, the day the shooting happened on April 20th. Now, this happens at the end of the film. We don't see the actual shooting take place. We just see we just see Eric and Dylan shoot Rachel's friend, you know, based on the real-life person Richard, Costal Richard Costaldo, who was, like, one of the first victims to be shot. And, you know, then we just, just see Rachel and her friend getting shot by Eric and Dylan. And then Eric picks Rachel up by the hair and asks her, do you believe in God? And she says, you know I do. And then Eric says, then go be with them. Now, I don't think that part is true. I think that is exaggerated because in this, during the actual shooting, there was an actual girl that was asked about God. Okay, and that was not Rachel Scott. That was Valine Sh Val Schnoor. She was in the library. She was asked about God, but she survived even though she was injured. But anyways, you know, so during the attack, Klebold and Harris killed 13 people, 12 students and one teacher, and they injured like 20, 21, 23 people, I think. Yeah, and so Rachel was killed, Richard got injured, and he was paralyzed. Then they went over to the front doors, they killed Dan, Daniel Rohrbog, they injured Sean Graves and Lance Kirkland. Then they injured Mark Taylor, Michael Johnson, and Anne-Marie Hotch Halter, I think her name was. Then they injured Stephanie Munson inside the school. Then Patty Nielsen was injured and Brian Anderson. Then Mrs. Nielsen was running to the library telling everybody to get under the tables. And then Klebold and Harris shot Dave, Dave Sanders and he would die from his injuries a few hours later. They went to the library, killed 10 people. Okay, Craig, Craig Scott, Rachel's brother, was in the library and was hiding under a table. And his friends Isaiah, Scholes, and Matthew Kector were killed right next to him and he survived without even being injured. So yeah, the, the, the library was the worst part of the shooting, with 10 people being killed over there and 12 others being injured. And then afterwards, Eric and Dylan, like, like went to the to cafeteria to try to blow up the bomb, because their original plan was to, they wanted to bomb the school originally, but it didn't work because the bombs, like, weren't made properly. They tried shooting at them again, but failed. They went back to the library, exchanged gunfire with the police, and then they, and they, they committed suicide. But one thing you notice is that Craig Scott... Which now I don't think this is this is false at all. Craig Scott warned everybody else to leave the library, you know, when Dil when he sensed that Eric and Dylan were gone. Now you know Craig you know warned everyone to leave the library, and if they didn't leave, they would have still been there when Eric and Dylan came back, and probably more of them would have, would, have, would have been killed. So Craig saved their lives there, you know, for a brief, for a brief second there. But I think Craig's really suffered really badly that day, you know, losing his sister, his two friends were killed right next to him, and it, it, that must have been devastating. And also, Craig said that he got into a fight with his sister, you know, on the, like, like, like during, you know, just before it happened, and that was the last time he saw her. I mean, it's pretty heartbreaking. Even if you're not a Christian, even if you don't believe with, agree with what they believe, you still have to admit that is pretty heartbreaking, you know, like having, like, having to go through all that. It's just too traumatic, you know. Obviously, Columbine changed a lot of people, and... You know, I do not condone what Eric and Dylan did. I have no sympathy for what they did. I do not think they were the bullied outcasts as they would have everyone believe. Because we already know, like I said before, the theory is completely, completely garbage. It's not true. So anyway, the film was, I think the film tried to show a positive message about, message about some girl making a difference on the universe. Which I can understand, you know, making a difference for the world. You know, it's a good thing, right? But I don't agree with all the propaganda stuff that was pushed in the film. Because I think that some of that may have been slightly exaggerated. But that's just my personal preference. So that's my review about the, the 2016 film, I'm Not Ashamed. And I hope you respect my opinion. Tonville Legend, 826 out.